Hey everyone, welcome back. Here we are working on our 57 Insane Rat Rod. Um, where we are is we've gotten the body finished. I believe I showed this in the last video. So that's in good shape. Um, what we're working on now is the chassis and the framework. Taking a lot of effort. Um, I showed you before what we did um, when we were putting together the extensions here. Uh, last night I worked and put the nose clip piece on to the extensions. Uh, basically did the same thing here that I did on, on where it connected to the frame. And that is, this has got a U channel in it. It's you know sol uh, empty at the top, hollow, solid all around, <clears throat> except for the top. Um, I've drilled holes in my extension pieces. Okay, um, and for this I, I just laid in some styrene, put it in the holes, um, put it in the holes, laid it in the trough, and glued the surfaces together, a 30 minute epoxy sculpt in here to hold the styrene in there, and I've got a pretty good bond. Um, the front clip, the front clip on this kit here, and again, this is the gasser kit, not the Del Rio kit. This one comes, so I, so I can't speak for the Del Rio kit, Let me, uh, that's what I'm trying to get to. This kit, the Gasser kit, comes with two different front ends. It comes with your stock front end and it comes with a Gasser front end, which would mean the uh, rail to it, um, the I-beam setup, <clears throat> and uh, leaf springs, which puts it really nose high in the air. Because of that, I opted to use the stock leaf spring, or not leaf spring, but the stock control arm setup on this. Um, it may be a mistake, uh, I'm not sure yet, but that's what I went with. Um, I just felt that putting the leaf springs in and everything with um, with that beam would make it too high because it was really a straight beam, whereas with um, like some of the other gassers, the rat rods, stuff like that, they give you two beams, one straight and the other has got the curve which allows you to do that lowered front end. This kit doesn't have that so I just felt it would be too high for what I wanted so I decided to go with the stock suspension. So <clears throat> the work on that, do that. This plate here with the lower control arms has posts on the top, little posts, little posts, and what it does is they connect into the bottom of the frame here giving it some ride height to give it the car again we want to go with a lowered car I cut those knobs off and then mated the lower control arms directly to the frame um, so I should lower the car a bit the other thing I had to do is I cut off the very tip of the frame here okay this part here is gone all right and then the the pinion gear or whatever these pieces here, uh, the steering mechanisms and everything, when I had to remove those because when I put the engine in, the engine's got a specific mounting point for the transmission and then it lays forward. So these steering linkages were up against the oil pan. Um, I actually could have just pushed them forward, it just wouldn't look right. So I actually removed the the steering linkage from the control arms and just shorten them on RCH, just a scotch, you know. Uh, put it back in place and that gave me just the amount of room I needed to put the engine in with clearance. So that's good. It's feeling pretty sta uh, stable right now, which is good. Uh, next thing I'm working on also with this is this was the cross member for that housed the engine for the original stock. Um, frame setup because I've altered it I needed I want to take this because I like the mounting point the engine mounts on here and I cut off the pieces to the frame because it didn't no longer made it up with the customization of the frame um, I'm currently working on modifying that I need three more hands in order to get everything in place and line them up but that's where I am so we're making parts this this part here is going to be cut in half these trimmed up and basically I'll have two pieces then and they'll go on the ends here like this so it'll it'll make sense basically I'll make an extension like that 
in this part here I'll come up then and go into the frame and I just have to get the proper locations uh, there's holes here on the very ends which will allow this to go into so that'll hold that again it's exaggerated nothing's trimmed up yet but basically that's what's going to happen this will go in there and the other half is going to go on this side the glue the holes and the the pin method here will hold everything in place and give it a little bit more stability uh, the engine the engine so far is just this basic engine I've done nothing to it um, we'll weather it more finish it off and all that stuff later so that's where we are right now so stay tuned we'll be right back good morning guys we're back <clears throat> and we are working on our 57 insane rat rod um, I kinda got ahead and I completed something I didn't I wanted to show you guys first um, what we have here is the rear wheels okay um, if you compare this rear wheel is not part of the kit this wheel comes from this AMT competition and custom kit um, you can get these online um, this one happens to be all large beefy beefy slicks um, they come white walls you can get all kinds of different ones depending on what you're building I got this one that's all big slicks $7.99 I think was the original price this one I happen to get at Hobby Lobby um, I recently picked up two more of these kits for two dollars on a clearance rack so I'm really set with slicks for a good long time but these are nice and beefy and they add a nice custom look to whatever you're trying to do to your vehicles again you can get red lines you can get these in red lines you can get them in pie cutters um, blue lines actually uh, the big fat white walls the very thin white walls I mean they, they come in all different styles so keep an eye out for these if you haven't seen them yet um, they can very they can change your builds radically in this case case I wanted big and beefy but with big and beefy comes a bit of a problem um, first off as you can see this is the wheel here the profile of the wheel next to the stock wheel this is what the stock wheel looks like that's a huge difference and if you come this way again we roll in here a little bit you can see just what a difference that wheel is and it's huge right now there's nothing wrong with this wheel the stock wheel there's nothing wrong with it I don't want people to feel guilty or intimidated because I thought this was garbage and didn't use it it's not really garbage it doesn't fit what I'm trying to do with this kit the look that I'm going for so I went with these now with this comes a bit of a problem and again the wheels are assembled so I can't show you I'm going to try to show you with some spare parts that I have I'm going to take a rear wheel uh, another one of the wheels that I just put on there <clears throat> and a rim just at any old rim for now to represent the stock the the rim from the kit and then a backing plate here's what I ran into um, with this kit these rims and I'll make believe this is the rim from the kit they don't have that post on the end see this post right here this kit doesn't have this on the on their rims it's just this big thick piece okay so what happens is what's supposed to happen is if you take the rear plate and you put it on here okay it's supposed to go on like this not here again this post doesn't exist on the kit it's supposed to go and and mat up like that and your wheel would fit hold on one second and then your wheel would fit right here correct does that make sense okay but because these wheels are thicker what happens is when they go together whoops I'm sorry when they go together on the wheel again make believe this post doesn't exist here okay when they go on on that wheel the, di the 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 wheel is wider so these two parts the rim and the backing plate never meet there's a gap in between so if you were to just glue these to the tires which I usually don't do I might put it like a seal on it but I don't usually glue it straight to the tire because the vinyl to plastic mating doesn't usually hold very well so when you were to squeeze these two if you were to do that 
hope this makes sense. You're able to actually take the tire and you're 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 able to squeeze it like this because the two parts don't meet. So what I had to do is I had to create this piece right here. I had to create something like that because again it doesn't exist on the original part. So I took some evergreen styrene rod I have here. Okay, high praises for this stuff all the time. You got to get all kinds of shapes and sizes of evergreen because you never know when you're going to use it. This is one of those cases. So what I did is I cut it down to a small little piece and then I glued it to the rim and then I, which made this part right here focus. Okay, and then the backing plate met up to it. That's where I glued the parts together and now the wheel itself is solid. I don't, I'm, I'm squeezing. There's no give as opposed to if I had it without those parts I'd be doing this. Alright, so now you got a nice solid wheel. Alright, that's all. Um, it's, it's not like a big huge revelation but I just wanted you guys to see what I was doing um, in case you came across something like this in the kit. Just something to keep in mind. Um, the rims themselves here I <clears throat> left them chrome. I hit them with Rustall um, solution. You've seen that before. I'll be bringing that out again later. Here it is. This is the Rustall stuff. Okay. Um, I actually, I take it back. I left it chrome. I dull coated the rim first with, spra with the spray dull coat. Then I applied this, which gave it a nice. Um, uh, a rusty dull look to it and I will eventually probably go with container number two in the rust all which is this one it's a darker rust almost a sooty powdery look and I'll go back later with this and I'll put it on here to act like brake dust and stuff like that to give it a more weathered look but that's where we are right now with the rims okay now part two of this video on wheels and rims I will pop up a picture of what happened when I put the wheel in place actually I can show you now I'll show you a picture insert picture here okay that's the problem I had what happened is this wheel as you can see was up like this so what I had to do is I had to open this area here because it came down too straight. It looked fine, I thought, but it was just too straight. So I had to open that up, and I also had to thin this piece out here. As you can see, the white showing there. I thinned the wall and this part of frame because this frame came out was square because this came straight down. Okay, now it's got a little bit of a curve which matches the body. <clears throat> and now, when I put these in place. you can see I've got room now um, is it a lot of room no would I be comfortable if I was actually driving this car not really but I've actually seen some gassers and stuff like that that have had just about that much room so I may thin it out a little bit more but basically that's where it's gonna be so it looks um, even when you put the body on <coughs> put the body on excuse me oh, you can see now we have a proper gap which we didn't have before so cool beans cool beans all right be right back